Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast. This is episode number 170 of the show. Uh, quite the momentous episode. Uh, 170 of anything is quite a bit. Uh, I'm Ramon Mejia, and I'm here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and of course author interviews. And this week I have three new reviews for you folks at home. I know it's uh, not as many as normal, but a uh, short week, short episode, uh, big, big news personally for me. It had a wife and I had a baby, um, super adorable. Um, but that also means less sleep, less time to read. Um, no writing done this week. Um, sorry guys. Um, but good news still. So also many, many reasons why this is a special week. So, um, welcome to the world kid. Um, also before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to a Patreon supporter, Michael Chatfield, uh, who upped his monthly support. Um, he, Thanks, man. He, like he got super generous. Uh, he it may be just be for this month uh, as a happy baby gift, um, but I'll take it. So thank you very much, Michael Chatfield, for for being so generous and supportive. Um, on to let's see new releases and reviews. We have uh, three new little bit reviews for you folks at home, including Breaking Rules, a little bit adventure, new game minus book number three. That's uh, the third book uh, from Sarah Lynn in the new game minus series. I've enjoyed every single one. We'll see how this one goes later. Um, also, this week is Macrocosm, book number one, called Sanctum. Um, and then the last one, at least, is The Path of the Samurai, a little bit adventure beneath the Horimono book. Um, number one. That's the actual title. Okay, on to new releases. Uh, sorry, a little bit of news. A little bit of news. And in lit RPG news, uh, we are going to begin with uh, Apocalypse Gates and uh, Daniel Schienhofen. Uh, Daniel Schienhofen let the podcast know that he is publishing the fourth book in his Apocalypse Gates series on May the 15th. So we'll be adding it to our upcoming list of lit RPG titles. Um, but even more so, he actually plans to promote the novel well in advance of its actual release on May 15th um, with the, some sales. Um, the... Sales are going to be staggered a little bit um, with each book having a, a particular sale period and the sale price is gradually increasing um, back to normal prices. So get in there early, get the best deals you can. Um, everything's starting at 99 cents on their, on their sale release date and then gradually rising in back to normal price. Uh, book one in the series is going to be on sale from May the 6th to the 8th. Um, so it's still on sale technically as of this recording, but you may be missing out soon. Book two is going to be on sale from the 9th of May to the 11th of May. Book three will be on sale from May the 12th to the 14th, which is then going to lead right into uh, the release of book number four on May the 15th. So very interesting um, schedule. Um, and I definitely recommend if you like uh, harem stuff, if you like novels with a good, interesting fantasy, um, interesting polyamorous relationships that actually mean something. And it's not just about sex stuff. Um, very interesting reads, of course, with the action adventure of, of being second in M fantasy MMO with some good comment stuff as well. So a uh, recommended series for me, at least. Um, also in Little Bridge News, we have um, a site-wide sale on Audible um, up until Mother's Day, which will be Sunday the 12th looking at a calendar because I, I now realize that I should do something for my wife who's a mother. Uh, so new things for everybody. Um, I think you should appreciate uh, new audiobooks since they're 50 to 70% off. Um, again, on every single title, as long as you're an active member on Audible, um, you actually have some really great deals on And this includes a ton of um, all little RPG titles because it's everything. Um, my personal recommendation list is like, oh, nothing but Audible <laughs> stuff for little RPG. So that's there. Um, but I want to thank um, Sambu Theater for uh, for sending out the message and the the Audible sales signal <laughs> for everybody to enjoy. Uh, and so that. You don't have to be mother to enjoy this, but I, I think your mothers will like this. Uh, and I will, of course, recommend um, anything I've written. Audible books for all of them, of course. Adventures in Terror, Product Alpha, Planet Bound, 
it's all there for you folks to enjoy. So there we go. Um, also in Liberty News, we have Magic Dome Books announcing this week that they would be changing the cover art for discarding book number one. Um, they actually said this in the in the release on their site saying um, that a few people complained or they just made comments about it uh, and even per this rightly so, um, that the cover art for book one just didn't work very well for, maybe it's just the American audience. Um, so there was cut, do, really soon it's actually already out um actually i had to go look up on my backup files for the original cover art just to show you the difference so if you're watching the video version of the podcast you can actually get a really good look at um the what the cover art used to look like which is an interesting art style it is specific um but it's just a guy and a girl sitting on a bench in front of a tavern in modern day clothes and it didn't tell you much about the story um the new cover art has a first person point of view with like some guy with magical hands and fists fighting a wolf, which is a little more action and engaging. And it does reflect some of the um, early combat scenes from that particular story. So there you go. It is uh, hopefully that'll pick up sales for them because it's actually re- uh, quite an interesting novel. Um, the beginning's a little slow though, um, but still very interesting. I enjoyed it. Give it a good review. In other little bitchy news, we have Tao Wong, author of The System of Apocalypse, um, taking open submissions for a new short story anthology set in his universe. He actually um, acknowledges that he's 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 copying some other uh, publishing companies who have done the same thing, and they've actually found really good talent uh, for their companies to to do this kind of stuff, and it's also good promotional work and exposure for other artists and other writers. Um, but he's he's taking open submissions um, for story set in his own particular story universe. So good for him. It's a great way to expand um, the the universe, your story universe beyond what you personally can write. I definitely like that. And that's a really expensive universe. That, that it, the whole RPG apocalypse universe, this world, lots of story telling potential there. Um, there are some particular rules for your submissions. The deadline is going to be June 30th, 2019. The setting is going to be, again, um, in that universe for System Oculus, but it's between, it's has, your story has to be set before the end of book three. So there's a particular timeline period in there. And I think that's a, that's a good period um, because that's before the main character goes off and does other things in other places, which I don't want to spoil for people who haven't read it. Um, the length of each short story should be between 10,000 uh, 10, and 20,000 words. Um, so there's a particular format. Um, and of course, there um, the author will be paying you for your work, um, and and you'll be releasing to them to publish. And there are a couple other uh, uh, caveats in there, so definitely go read the, the the rules for those submissions and where you can obviously submit them. Uh, it's on Tao Wong's website. We'll be linking the show notes, but it's my uh, my life my Tao dot com if you want to go check it out. Okay, uh, and last bit of little bit of news, we have the JVJ podcast interview Dakota Craft this week, um, and if you want to go check it out, um, we'll have a link in the show notes for you, but also can go to their website at jvjpodcast.com, and that's the most recent podcast there to go check out. I'm a huge fan of Dakota, a personal friend of mine, um, so it's always cool to see him talk to other people about the, the genre and the podcast, or uh, the genre and on any podcast so there you go okay and that's it for liberty news on to stuff that is out now um stuff that just came out recently haven't had a chance to read it though uh, including the ezra dragon a heroic fantasy saga the atar chronicles book number three um i couldn't finish this book before the podcast just didn't have time so but um it's interesting and i've enjoyed it so far um but i have not finished it so no review yet uh also out is the phoenix of ulteria a digital sorcerer book number two um i enjoyed book number one in the series i'm i'm hoping book number two is going to be funny as well we'll see um also out is the rise of the crimson order a crematoria online little beach novel um richard hummel's second book has is out it's actually out in the wild so go check it out if you liked book number one um remember it's called radioactive evolution i think uh, for book number one um book two is radioactive re-evolution so there you go a dystopian post-apocalyptic adventure um on to new audiobooks that are out um we have resurgence the rise of resurgence book number one out as an audiobook finally so that took a really long time um also out is i am gamer by gabriel rothwig also narrated by Gabriel Rathwig. Uh, it is a, it's a super ambitious project in my opinion, um, to not only write the story, but then take the time and effort to, to narrate it yourself and do the audiobook um, editing process. That's, that's, it's a huge time sink. 
Um, but Gabriel's never been one to, to shy away from um, doing experimental stuff and trying new things. And uh, so super proud of the guy for doing the narration himself. Like it's, it's a major time. I think just about every um, author who's ever written a story and thought about making an audiobook ha has tried it themselves to do it. And they found that it's, it's, it's such a lot of extra work that they could probably write a whole other story. And uh, the amount of time it took them to, to narrate and edit and do all the cleanup stuff and making sure the formatting's right. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so Gabriel's, um, uh, super proud of buddy for doing that commitment. I hope the audiobook does well. Um, of course, we'll have a link in the show notes for you to go check it out. Um, also out as an audiobook is Rule Keeper Advent, Rule Keeper, um, book number four in that particular show, Justin Miller, always a fun series. Uh, Valhalla Online, Publisher's Pack, um, is also out as an audiobook. This is actually a repackaging from, um, author Kevin McLaughlin for his, um, for his series, for the Valhalla Online series. He's actually, uh, put books one and two together as one audiobook and books three and four is another audiobook. And that's the one that's out right now. It's just that I'm talking about. So I actually get books three and four in that series. They're a little shorter, um, for a little bit of stories and the total, time frame for for the audiobook is going to be about 10 hours for two books so um pretty good deal and of course it's on sale um for right now so definitely go get a lot of these stories i've enjoyed most of the valhalla online series so it's nice um also out is endless online um oblivion's price from mh johnson as an audiobook and also battle spire um is out as an audiobook as well so if you like the ebook you like the audiobook. If you ever checked out the ebook, it's a pretty good story. We give it a good good review uh, from Portal Books, who's been doing some really quality literary titles from from their publishing company. Okay, on to upcoming literary. This is just where I read out the stuff that's coming out in the near future. Um, starting with Monsters, the literary series, The Beatles, out on May the fourteenth. On May the fifteenth, Rapture, Apocalypse Gates, uh, book number book. Oh, I've, it's somewhere in there. It's book number four in this series. Um, and it's not called Rapture. It's called Apocalypse Gates Elven Accord. And this is me not, not reading and editing properly. Um, on May the 18th, it'll be Guardians of the Roundtable, book number five. Uh, on May the 20th, the fourth book in the Reality Bender series called Web of Worlds. On May the 21st, it'll be the second book in the Alpha Farmer series called uh, Scurfier. Uh, on May the 31st, it'll be the fifth book in the Divine Engine series, and I believe it might be the last in the official one from Dakota Kraut uh, called Dungeon Eternium. We'll have to wait and see. I'm, I'm personally looking forward to get my hands on that one. Uh, super fan of that particular series. Uh, June the 1st, we'll have the second book in the Realm of Noria series. On June the 1st as well, it'll be Kingdom Come, the third book in the Archemy Online series called Dragon Rob. Yeah, there we go. Kingdom Come in that series. Uh, also, on June the 1st, it'll be the seventh book in the System Apocalypse series uh, called Stars Awoken. Uh, and there you go. So you actually have three titles, uh, three, th like four major titles coming out on the same like two day period. So, um, guys, if you're an author and you're thinking about releasing about that time, you might want to think about a different release date. Uh, the, the next like big release is going to be on um, June the 10th. So you actually have a whole week in there to. Put your stuff out. Um, just saying. Um, uh, it'll be called Apostles of the Sleeping Gods, Discardian book number two. And you notice the cover art matches that original a little bit. So we'll have to see if they ever change that. But this to me is a little more action-y for cover art. Uh, on June the 13th, it'll be the sixth book in the Guy series, Home Siege Home. June the 15th, it'll be Code Hero, Champion is Playing, book number two. Uh, June the 20th, City of Freedom, Adam Online, book number two, uh, by... Max Larkno. Uh, on June the 20th, it'll be the Gin Tamer's third book in that series called Evolution. Uh, June the 25th, Shift, book number two. And July the 18th, it'll be the Time Master Central World Network, book number one, a new series. I haven't had a chance to read it, haven't heard anything about it, but it's on, on Amazon as a lit pretty story, so there you go. Okay, on to the actual reviews for new releases and reviews. first out of the gate this week is going to be Breaking Rules, a little bit of adventure, new game minus book number three, written by Sarah Lynn. It is some pages, uh, 610 pages, $4.99, and it is available on Kindle Unlimited. And here's the author's description. Bloodwraith was a villain who hated adventurers until he found himself transferred into the body of one. Trapped without his magic, he discovered that alien beings were using his reality 
as a game, and he had just become a player. Teaming up with a glitched NPC and other adventurers, he has no choice but to learn the truth about himself and his world. The adventure, original adventurer may be defeated, but Bloodwraith and his allies have attracted the attention of the beings that control his world. They're coming in force, bringing both control of the system and bizarre alien powers. Bloodwraith will have no choice but to fight for his life while trying to understand the conflicts among the box gods. That battle will take him back to Cresthaven, to new cities entirely, through the most dangerous dungeon yet, and against opponents unlike any he's ever faced. So there we go. Um, actually, pretty solid uh, description of the story. Um, this is a solid story. Uh, I've enjoyed everything that Sarah Lynn has written. Um, I think the first book in the series um, is, is, is really good. And she's one of the breakout art Ludbridge authors of the year. I've said that many times. Um, this one is probably my least favorite in the series. But that's mostly because of just some of the wand waviness that comes with the introduction of the box gods, uh, that kind of plot in there. Um, but still, very solid storytelling. Uh, it's an entertaining story still. And again, it introduces, I guess, some cyberpunkish kind of um, elements, um, since you have these outsiders from other dimensions with abilities to, to kind of break the game rules, which is always something that bugs me. Um, but again, I think the author really struck a nice balance in the story between doing those elements, which are important for the overall storyline, um, the plotting for the series, um, but still making the RPG stuff matter in the story. And I think that's a really fine line to walk um because it's usually most of the stories i wrote with that have these cyberpunk influences they tend to lean towards the cyberpunk at the expense of making your game mechanics um worthless or like not make not really mattering and in this particular instance the author i think does is a really fine job of keeping those game mechanics those rpg mechanics um making them still matter and making the RPG progression still matter and being a reason to, to exist. So good job for, for you, Sarah Lynn. Um, so good stuff there. Um, there's also some nice dungeon diving, and this is kind of an end to that first story arc in the series. Um, and I think it did well. Uh, so for me, it gets a score of 7.4 out of 10. Uh, that's breaking rules, a little RPG adventure in the new game minus book series. Um, book the three, uh, with the score of 7.4 out of 10. And next we have Macrocosm book number one, Sanctum, written by Matthew Powell. It is 285 pages, $2.99. It is available on Kindle Limited. Here's the author's description. When Joshua downloaded Macrocosm, he had expected it to be a brand new game like any other. It was new, it was shiny, and that meant that he would be able to make a killing by playing it. Joshua's a professional gamer, someone who makes a living by selling items and accounts in the 23rd century, and Macrocosm promises to be better than every gaming, every game before it. When he discovers that starting as a zombie provides amazing bonuses, Joshua felt like he didn't have a choice but to pick it up. Macrocosm has his own gods, and they treat players like pawns in their own little games. Joshua quickly draws the attention of the plague god filth and his peaceful plans quickly turn to take a turn for the worse as he finds himself the subject of one such game behind the scenes the mysterious company behind microcosm has its own plans what are they recruiting high level players for and why are these players never seen again um that is more of a serious description to be honest um some of that starts here but I think it's more of something you're going to see in book two and book three or whatever it is for the series. Um, this is a kind of a mixed bag. Uh, that novel description um, doesn't really apply to the story. Um, the cover art is not super engaged and doesn't tell you much about the story. So when I started reading this novel, I wasn't really sure what to expect. Um, but I'm glad I gave it a chance. I, I am. Um, this is a good story, though you have to push through the beginning a little. Like that novel description, it, it's doing a job of setting up a series instead of just this particular story. Um, and I get that. I, it's something that kind of draws away from the, my enjoyment a little bit, but still, you know, it's just something good. the, the rest of the story is still very entertaining. It's, it's, it, it's, it's good. Um, I just had to kind of get through that. Um, I don't think you really need for book one, but again, I get it set up for the series. Um, this turns out to be a monster main character story. The main character is playing as a, a VR MMO as a, uh, a zombie, um, uh, with the premise of like him earning a living, selling rare loot and gaming accounts. Um, that premise fades away fairly quickly and it's 
it's really just a slice of life story where you follow the main character as he makes his character, um, discovers the drawbacks of being a zombie as well as the potential overpowered aspects. He fights dungeon dives, levels, eventually connects with other players. And I think the story picks up pace there a little bit and improves. Uh, the story game mechanic wise reminds me of Headshot um, by Matthew Segan. If you ever read that, it's a, it's a very similar premise so of like um, the characters fighting as the zombies instead of the player side. Um, and that's what this is, essentially. And, and part of the draw for those particular stories is just kind of seeing what it's like to be a monster um, and the evolutions of of the zombie race, essentially. And that's what's here as well. Um, the author of this particular novel has unique evolutionary paths, has unique, um, well, some actually shares some, some zombie character traits and that are pulling from from common like zombie game stuff. So it's um, but the author here in the, for, for this main character has a unique evolutionary path. So it's not like they're copying each other. Um, and there's a definitely less player versus player combat in this particular story. Like um, Headshot definitely revolved around PvP. Um, so and this one just feels a little more fantasy esque in in its in its setup of the game world. Uh, the main character levels um, killing zombies. He gets a unique class. He gets abilities and skills. There are plenty of crunchy details in here for you folks who care about that. Character sheets, stats, damage notifications, item and monster additions, a ton of crunchy stuff. There's a good RPG progression with the main character's pestilence powers. Um, there's a sort of crafting system here as well. Um, and multiple progression paths that the main character reasons through. Like every time he has an opportunity to, to, to level... He can choose different traits for a zombie um, that will lead him down different character paths potentially. And I, one of the things I always like about a good story in the RPG is you're not just getting information; you're also getting the main the character's thoughts about their play style, their um, their their the way that they're thinking about how they're crafting their characters, because that's what gamers do. And it's a, it's a good insight into the character for, in my opinion, and this one definitely has that. There's plenty of information in the story to create your own zombie character if you wanted to for the same moment. I think it's always a good sign of, oh, somebody, uh, a story with it, with good RPG details for people who like that kind of stuff. Um, overall, had a good time with the story. Uh, I think, again, the zombie evolutions are probably one of the more interesting aspects of the story. Gets a score for me of 7.3 to 10. That's Macrocosm book number one, Singdom, uh, with a score of 7.3 out of 10. And last for the week is going to be the path of the samurai a little RPG adventure beneath the hormonal book number one written by Luca Petrov and Honey jar. Um, this is approximately 80 pages. There's no extra page count on Amazon as of this recording for this. It is priced at $2 to 99 cents that is available on Kindle limited. Um, now normally I would go off and read the novel description, um, to give you a, a gist of what the story is, but it doesn't matter here because this isn't lit RPG. Um, it's a, it's another poor quality attempt at writing lit RPG from the author Luca Petrov. But like his other series, the Reborn series, it kind of tries to shoehorn in a few snap pages into the story and a few mentions of levels and saying, and then slaps a lit RPG, you know, on the title and, and expects it to like do really well. Um, this time the story is at least set in MMO. Uh, before much of the early part of the story, you'd probably be hard pressed to to recognize that. The story focuses mostly on the uh, samurai bushido aspects for for a while. It is it is again still set in MMO, so that's why it, it's pretty clear there, at least as opposed to some of the other stories that the author has written. Um, but again, the story itself is not particularly entertaining, and while you might really do a really long stretch and call this gamelet, since it is set technically in a game uh, it is definitely not a little rpg there, there's there's no rpg progression i mean there's there's a few lines saying oh we gain levels from a doing a thing and that's kind of the extent of it though um there are a couple of monster notification screens information screens um that's kind of it though um so i'm like it's definitely not little rpg for me uh gets a score of four to ten and this is again probably the third book from luca petro of that that has had this issue where the author is saying, oh, this is little RPG, you can read this. And it feels like a, a right to market scheme. Um, and it's just not, it's the author doesn't understand what little RPG is or there he's intentionally, you know, marketing this and not actually giving us what we want. And none of these stories have gotten good reviews from, from readers. So, um, I mean, there are a few people who've enjoyed the story otherwise, but not many. Um, so for me, it scores four to 10, that's path of the samurai. A lit RPG adventure beneath the horror, horror mono book series number one. 
um, with the score again, four out of 10. And that's it for the show, everybody. I know three reviews in and out real quickly. This is a short episode. Um, but thank you for hanging out with me anyways. Um, if you want to support the podcast, uh, you can find all the ways to do so at littlebitpodcast.com slash support. But again, plenty of places you can follow us. Uh, we have a Facebook page, Twitter page, YouTube, Patreon, our website at littlebitpodcast.com where we have all of our reviews that we do every single week um, in a database. So you can search through for all the good things you're looking for or any particular subcategories. And of course, we have other links for Facebook pages where authors, Little Bridge authors and readers get together and talk and read and joke and have uh, interesting conversations um again Bo. um thanks for hanging out with me it's been a super busy <laughs> week uh and i barely have time to, to record and read but got it done for you guys because um it's important to me i love the genre i love being a member of this community um and i appreciate you guys taking the time to to watch and then to to use your precious time to um <laughs> listen to to my my opinions but of course as always um read the stuff you want to. Um, just one guy giving an opinion for stuff that he loves and reads. Um, but always go check it out for yourself and form your own opinions. Um, thanks for hanging out with me today, ladies and gentlemen. Um, remember until we can hang again though, to read, uh, to go read some little RPG. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>